Oh, this is so cool. Oh, nice. All right. It's all right. I'm getting ready. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 267 items. Dude. Yeah. Um, I like collecting. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna go over every single gun in the Wild West. This is one of the most challenging videos I've ever made because of the insane number of weapons. When I say every weapon, I really mean every obtainable weapon. Except Mare's Leg because it's really difficult to get and I'm sure most of you guys won't even have it. I'm gonna be going into complete detail and I'll explain the pros and cons for each gun. I tested each one out for a while to get plenty of information on them. Before I start the video, I wanted to mention someone named Ketty. This dude is the only reason I can make this video. He let me borrow all of the guns, organize and everything just for me. On top of that, he even acted as the test dummy for the guns. So, of course, I tried to return the favor, but he doesn't have any social media or anything. So all I can say is thank you so much. Also, note that I rate these weapons against their genre of weapons, not against all weapons. So pistols are going to be rated against the other pistols and so on. The Volcanic Rifle. Its pros are its higher ammo capacity, fast fire rate, great accuracy, the ability to be fanned, and low recoil. The cons are its slow reload, low headshot damage, and it's dropped on death. I really like the Volcanic Rifle. I'm super bad at using it, but it's all around very good. I rate it a 9 out of 10. The Frozen version of this is precisely the same, except it doesn't drop when you die. The Yellow Boy Rifle. Its pros are its super snappy reload, its amazing recoil, and it's really cheap. Its cons are its low damage, the low average accuracy, and low ammo capacity. Personally, I think this is a super underrated rifle, and I really never see anyone using it. If you're a beginner and super broke, I really recommend this rifle. I rate it a 7.4 out of 10. Oh my gosh! Yeah! The Lynx Bolt Action Rifle. Its pros are its high body damage, really high headshot damage, low price, insane accuracy, and absurd penetration. Its cons are its low ammo capacity, slow reload, and slow fire rate. I never use the Lynx, mainly because of its ammo capacity, but this gun is so incredibly good if you can hit your shots. I rate it an 8.6 out of 10. The Sharps Rifle. The pros are its tremendous damage, great bullet penetration, scoping capability, and flawless accuracy. Its cons are its swaying aim when you hold your breath, horrible ammo capacity, non-hit fire ability, and super long shooting gaps. I've always hated snipers in games, but I can't deny their usefulness. This rifle is high tier for long range and can really make you want to just camp all the time. I rate it an 8 out of 10. The Harmonica Rifle. Its pros are its increased ammo capacity, decent accuracy, really fast fire rate, and high damage for an automatic weapon. Its cons are its slow reload, vulnerable movement speed while shooting, and awful bullet penetration. I think this rifle is pretty good for people who have bad aim, like me. You're able to spray and pray, making it really OP for some people. Overall though, this is only good for medium range fights. I rate it a 7.8 out of 10. The Winchester Rifle. Its pros are its excellent damage, good ammo capacity, very good accuracy, and great bullet penetration. Its cons are its long reload, and it's pretty expensive. This gun is super good. I've used it for a while, and it's super reliable and definitely top tier for rifles. I rate it a 9.5 out of 10. The Hartford Rifle. Its pros are its really fast reload, super good bullet penetration, significant damage, aiming speed is quick, and has perfect accuracy. Its cons are its non-hip fire ability, single ammo capacity, and low headshot damage for snipers. Again, I don't really like snipers, but this one isn't horrible. It's excellent for all ranges, and in general, it does some serious damage. But the headshot is not enough to one-shot, making it somewhat irritating. I rate it an 8 out of 10. No. The Guy Caught Chain Carbine. Its pros are its extremely high fire rate, highest ammo capacity in the game, great accuracy, it's automatic, and fast reload per bullet. Its cons are its super low damage, 42 second full reload, bad recoil, it's really pricey, and it has horrible bullet penetration. This rifle is one of the worst in the game simply because of how little damage it does. You have to hit 5 headshots or 9 body shots to kill someone. I rate it a 6 out of 10.
Oh my gosh. The Spitfire Revolving Sniper. Its pros are its fast fire rate, superior bullet penetration, ability to switch scopes, and from full auto to burst shot, it's fantastic for long range, and it deals more damage the further away you are. Its cons are its super high recoil, unsteady aiming when scoping, it's the most expensive weapon in the game, lower damage at close range, and it's now not even obtainable from the auction house. The Spitfire is very hard to get nowadays, making it unrealistic to even want. Although it has to be the best sniper and one of the best guns in the Wild West for sure. It does so much damage at long range and even close range is acceptable. I rate it an 8.8 out of 10. Go! The Peacekeeper. The pros are its fanning capability, good accuracy, and easy accessibility. The cons are its bad reload speed, low damage, and horrible recoil. The Peacekeeper can be very good in close range battles, but only if you have good aim. I rate it a 6.8 out of 10. Oh, oh wow. The Model 3. The pros are its fanning capability, ankle breaking speeds, great accuracy, good recoil, quick reload, and it's easy to obtain. The only con is its profane damage. I love the Model 3 and keep it for a while off the start. It can handle many close to mid-range battles as well. I rate it a 7.7 .7 out of 10. The Lamont Revolver. The pros are its fanning capability and exceptional damage. Its cons are its atrocious accuracy, recoil, and reload speed. I never use the Lamont. It's tough to use and it feels super clunky. I rate it a 4 out of 10. The Navy Revolver. The pros are its exceptional damage, speedy reload, and fast shooting. The cons are its damage drop off and it can't be fanned. I have a lot of fun with this weapon and it's just as good as most rifles. I rate it an 8.5 out of 10. The Lock Revolver. The pros are its fanning capability, high fire rate, quick reload, and decent accuracy. The cons are its super bad recoil, high cost, and the fact that you can't run while shooting it. There are a lot of different opinions on this gun simply because of how different it is. I think it's a great gun for hunting and close range battles, but it's almost useless when used for mid to long range fights. I rate it a 7.5 out of 10. No. I've been robbed. Oh my gosh, thank you. The Hammerless Revolver. Its pros are its high fire rate, fast reload, and good accuracy. Its cons are its low damage, you can't fan it, and it's super expensive. I think the Hammerless can be fun, but it's super bad for PvP. It costs way too much for how bad it is. I rate it a 5.7 out of 10. Oh my gosh, I suck. The Patterson Navy. Its pros are its incredible damage, range, accuracy, bullet penetration, and it can be fanned. The cons are its long reload, bad recoil, super expensive, and slow shooting speed. I think this gun is incredible, and it's top tier for secondary guns. The worst thing about it is its price. I rate it a 9.6 out of 10. The Volcanic Pistol. Its pros are its great accuracy, fire rate, damage, ability to fan fire, low price, and high bullet capacity. Its cons are that it drops when you die, slow fan fire shooting, and you have to claim a fort to get it. I don't use it too often, but after using it, I do have to say it's very good. I rate it an 8.7 out of 10. The cursed version of this is exactly the same except it doesn't drop when you die. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The Lindsay Double Shot Pistol. The pros are its super quick reload, great accuracy, fast fire rate, and good recoil. The cons are its super low ammo capacity and lower headshot damage. I don't think the Lindsay is very good, but that's because my aim sucks. This pistol is super risky in PvP, and unless you have unbelievable aim, you may not like it. I rate it a 6.5 out of 10. Oh, he has my exact skin on. The Mauser, or Mauser, or whatever the freak it's called. Its pros are its pretty good accuracy, its automatic, high ammo capacity, high fire rate, and full clip reload. 
The cons are that it's game pass only and it has a lower headshot multiplier. The Mauser is a pretty good weapon, but only for medium range. Close range, it's too slow and too weak to really put a dent in anyone. I rate it a 7.4 out of 10. The Guy Caught Chain Pistol. Its pros are its fast fire rate, high ammo capacity, decent accuracy, fast reload, and it's another automatic weapon. The cons are its shallow damage, LMG-like long reloads because of all the ammo capacity, and it's very expensive. I don't really like this weapon overall, but you know when you get someone down to like one health and you just cannot hit them? This pistol will easily finish those people off. I rate it a 6.8 out of 10. The Swartzose Prototype Pistol. Its pros are its serious damage, ammo capacity, fire rate, rate accuracy, really fast reload, and it's automatic. Its cons are its high price and higher recoil. This is one of the top tier sidearms in my opinion. It holds its own in many situations and it's super fun. I rate it a 9.4 out of 10. The Lancaster Pistol. Its pros are its insanely high damage, good accuracy, and fast fire rate. Its cons are its huge damage drop off, it's high priced, it has low ammo capacity, and it can't be fanned. I have so much fun with this pistol, and it does the most damage out of any other pistol in the game. It's really good close range, but medium and long range, it definitely becomes worse. I rate it an 8.7 out of 10. Oh, oh wow, 99 through the wall. The Admiral's Axagon. The pros are its fair accuracy, insane damage, and it's a hybrid gun between shooting and melee. Its cons are its super low ammo capacity, super long reload, and it's really expensive. I tried this weapon for a while because of how much fun it was. You can run around one-shotting everyone if you're good enough. Although, it's a really bad weapon. If you're not the Master Marauder and have horrible aim like me, it's really just a useless weapon that costs way too much. I rate it a 6 out of 10. The Sawed Off Shotgun. Its pros are its high damage and multiple bullets per shot. The cons are its high recoil, crazy bullet spread, and low ammo capacity. I don't think this weapon is entirely useless, but it definitely isn't nearly perfect. For early game close range, it's really not a bad choice overall and it's pretty easy to hit your shots if you have crappy accuracy. I rated a 6.9 out of 10. Nice. The occult version is the exact same. No. The Dragoon. Its pros are its severe damage, decent fire rate, and multiple bullets per shot. Its cons are its really long reload, low accuracy, and you can't fan it. Of course. I don't use the Dragoon too much since I never really use shotgun type weapons in the Wild West. But I think that for people that like getting close, this is a perfect sidearm for you. I rate it a 7.3 out of 10. The Mule Shotgun. Its pros are its high damage and fast fire rate. Its cons are its super high recoil, low ammo capacity, lousy accuracy, and it's only useful close range. The shotguns aren't my favorite to use in this game. I always think barrel stuffing is annoying and tedious in some games, so in a game like the Wild West where you can't, it's not very good. This shotgun is not even close to being worthy to be a primary weapon. I rate it a 6.4 out of 10. And same with this one, the occult version is exactly the same. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. The revolving shotgun. Its pros are super high damage, higher ammo for a shotgun, decent reload speed, and has great range for a shotgun. Its cons are its slow fire rate, bad recoil, and it's the most expensive non-auction house weapon. I think this shotgun is really decent and can actually destroy people close range, and sometimes even medium range. You need to know how shotgun pellets work and have pretty decent accuracy to really get everything out of this gun, but overall it's not bad. I rate it an 8.4 out of 10. The Golden Dragoon. It's just a Salt Bay Dragoon that you get with Robux. The only fundamental difference between this one and its original counterpart is you can pull it out faster and you cannot hold it with a money bag at the same time. I rate it the same as the Dragoon, 7.3 out of 10. 
No. The knife. It's a low damage melee weapon, but it's cheap, so you can get it early. I rate it a 6 out of 10. The Bowie knife. It's a little bit better than the normal knife, but it's way more expensive. I rate it a 6.5 out of 10. The ceremonial version is exactly the same. The Kukri Machete. This weapon, although very expensive, is capable of two-shotting players, making it very good. I give it an 8 out of 10. There are other colored versions of the Kukri, but they're purely cosmetic changes. The Frozen Axe. The Frozen Axe is really fun to use, and it's exactly like the Tier 3 Axe, except it does 50 damage on each hit making it two-shot people. It's also a lot easier to get than the Kukri. I rate it a 9 out of 10. The Tomahawk. I really like Tomahawks, especially in this game. It does so much damage, but they're single use until you pick them back up. I rate it a 7.4 out of 10. The Candy Cane version of this is exactly the same. The Longbow. Its pros are its super great damage, quiet shots, zero damage fall off, and capability of different arrow types. Its cons are its super slow fire rate, bad accuracy when held for too long, slow movement speed when aiming, and arrow fall off. I like the bows, but this one is not very good. Unless you can guarantee a headshot, it's really bad. I rate it a 6.4 out of 10. The blow dart gun. This weapon is really cool because it can paralyze your enemy for a while. It isn't meant to do serious damage or anything, it's purely for paralysis. I rate it a 7.4 out of 10 for how useful it is. The horse bow. The pros are its fast shooting, quiet arrows, high damage, no damage drop off, and capability of different arrow types. Its cons are its high price, cannot one shot, although very close, slow movement speed when aiming, and has lousy accuracy when held out for too long. I love the horse bow. It's one of my favorite weapons and is really good for a reason. You don't have to reload it, it shoots really fast, it makes no noise, and it does a crap ton of damage. It's excellent for fighting. I rate it a 9.6 out of 10. The frozen horn bow. This bow is pretty similar to the horse bow, but it's overall worse, especially the damage, except for its really cool ability of slowing enemies down. I rate it an 8.6 out of 10. I want to see what it's like killing you with this snowball. I want to fling you with this snowball. Oh. The number 5 spot in my list goes to the Volcanic Rifle. This one was next to the Lock Revolver, but there's so much debate on the lock that I didn't want to put it up. Number 4 is the Winchester Rifle. I couldn't help myself but put this up here. It's simply so reliable. Number 3 is the Horse Bow. Although I didn't use this one on the last season on my series, go check it out if you haven't, I still think the Horse Bow is super good. Number 2, the Swords Jose. The Swords Jose is just astonishing, no explanation is needed. Now, the number 1 spot on my list goes to... The Peacekeeper. No, it actually goes to the Guy Caught Pistol. No, okay, I'll stop. It really goes to the Patterson Navy. I really think the Patterson is just unstoppable. It outclasses every gun in every range. All right, I hope you enjoyed my list. Again, I worked forever on it, so please show me some support. Also, go to the comments right now and give me your personal top five list so I can see if mine is accurate or not. It'll also just be interesting to see what you guys pick. All right. See y'all in the next video.